Welcome, today we're gonna to do an experiment on conservation of matter. Uh, and so I have my supplies here, some super washing soda, some Epsom salt, some water. I have a measuring cup and a measuring spoon, a couple of glasses, my handy dandy little scale, uh, and a whiteboard to record some data on. So first I've measured off 50 milliliters of water into this cup, uh, and another 50 milliliters into this cup. And in one cup, we're going to put uh, one teaspoon of this washing soda. It's a bit different than baking soda, so you do need the washing soda. So I'm gonna put that in here. And then we're gonna whirl this around so that it dissolves the wash washing soda. This might take a little while. We wanna make sure we don't slosh any of our matter out because again, we're looking at how this is going to uh, be conserved in the end. So at this point, I'll keep whirling a bit, but we're gonna also put this on the scale to see what the mass is. And it's 72.6. So because that was our washing soda, we'll use the red pen. Uh, and our washing soda is sodium carbonate. So that is 72, 72.6 grams. And it's about there. So we have 72.6 grams for our washing soda. Um, and next up, we're going to still swirl this a bit. Let's make sure it's getting dissolved even more. And now we'll add our teaspoon of Epsom salt. So let me grab my teaspoon of Epsom salt. There we go. Put the salt into that 50 milliliters of water. Move this one over here so we don't get them mixed up. And then same thing, we're gonna whirl, whirl, whirl to get this to dissolve, we hope. <laughs> and then we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna whirl, whirl, whirl. Gently, we want it to dissolve. I'll whirl this one a little bit again. And then back to this one. And now we'll mask this one. And it's 77.8 grams. So we'll use our glue pen here, 77.8 grams, and it's about here. Of course, they're not colored, they're just water with, uh, in this case, magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt dissolving in this one. And again, sodium carbonate, which is washing soda, different than sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. So uh, if you're gonna replicate this experiment, just know that those are not the same thing, and you can find this washing soda in the uh, in the uh, laundry section at most uh, grocery stores or like a hard. I got that at a hardware store, but uh, you can find it in the washing section with the laundry detergents. All right, and so I can see that this is mostly dissolved, and let's just check the mass again. I wonder if it changed when it dissolved. Let's check that. No, nope, still 77.8 grams. So again, all that's happening is the salt's dissociating in the water, but the same total number of atoms are still in this water. Even if the salt is dissolving in the water, it's not disappearing, even though I can't see it with my eyes anymore. It's just dissolving in the water, and I can't see it necessarily, but the mass is still there, still the same. Let's check this other one. So again, this is basically dissolved in here. This looks a little bit hazy. It's not quite as clear as the one with the salt in it. And when I, so I put this on here, um, we mass it again, still uh, 72.6 grams. So fantastic, that's so great. All right, and now let's do our experiment. We're gonna mix these together and we're gonna see what happens. So here again, we have the uh, sodium carbonate and this is the Epsom salt mostly uh, dissolved away there. I think we're good enough, so we're gonna give it a try. Here we go, let's see what happens when we pour this in. Ooh, look at that reaction. What do you notice? Wow, what do you wonder? Oh my gosh, did you see what happened? So clearly we had a chemical reaction. Something happened, we formed a precipitate in there. Now that we've had our chemical reaction take place, before we mass it, Let's just double check what we think the mass total mass should be based on our original numbers. So we had 72.6 grams for our sodium carbonate and our magnesium sulfate, which is our Epsom salt, we had 77.8 grams. 
Can you add those up? Let's see what we get. And remember, always put units with our numbers. We'd never want any naked numbers. Numbers without units because we need to know what the heck they mean. So if we add this up, I would get 14 carry the one, and then 10 carry the one, and then 14, 15, 150.4 grams. So now let's make a prediction. Do you think that this mass, when we put it on the scale, because a chemical reaction has happened, remember, look at how this changed color. That's definitely an indicator of a chemical reaction taking place. Do you think the mass, when we put this on the scale, is gonna be the same as this total? Do you think it's gonna be less than this total? Or do you think it's gonna be greater than that total? So make a prediction. All right, I hope you've made your prediction. Now let's see what the data tells us. So remember, to mass this, we have to use both cups because we included them before and the entire solution is in there. And I'm gonna put it on our scale. And remember, this fluid went up higher, right? Uh, oh my gosh, and wouldn't you know it? Dun, dun, dun! It's 150.4 grams. And so what this teaches us is that when a chemical reaction happens, and even when, when a physical change happens, you can't create or destroy mass. In fact, it's just rearranging the atoms to create something new like this white precipitate that we got when we reacted these two uh, chemicals. But the same total number of atoms, the same amount of matter is still in there, and so we still have the same mass when it's all said and done.